Hello everyone. Welcome to Pilates. My name is Melanie and it's a pleasure to teach you this class today. Now if you've never done Pilates before, I hope you're in for a treat. Pilates will teach us about balance, strength, flexibility and mobility. So before we come down to the mat, let's take a moment to set ourselves up with our feet hip distance apart, keep your weight even into the front of the feet, into the back of the feet, and make sure that you feel that your knees can be soft. Ankles are soft, knees are soft, and bring your attention to the pelvis. The core is actually the whole trunk. So if you think about the core being your pelvis, the girdle of pelvis, the girdle of your rib cage, and the girdle of your shoulders. So making sure that you can get your hips over your sitting bones, over your heels. Think about your rib cage. Try to bring your rib cage directly over your pelvis. And then thinking about your shoulder girdle, bring your shoulders up, around and down and slide your shoulder down, right down the back. Let's do that twice more. So breathing in through your nose. And as you exhale, let the shoulders release. Once more, we carry a lot of tension in our shoulders, neck and chest. So let's release that tension. Make sure your knees are soft. Now with Pilates, the breath will help us move, particularly on some of the more challenging exercises where you're pushing your body away with, from gravity. So Take one hand each side of your rib cage. It's got to be quite high because your lungs are here, not down into the tummy part. So take your hands here, relax the distance between the earlobe and the top of the shoulders. Soften those knees. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Feel the ribs expand to the side. Now exhale like you're blowing through a straw or a gentle sigh. Let's do two more. This is the Pilates breath. One more. So when you're breathing in the Pilates way, I want you to be aware of breathing into the side of the ribs, under the armpits, and even into the back of the rib cage. Thinking about the pelvic floor, I think of a little drawstring bag. And you pull up the drawstring to tighten the pelvic floor just a little. Think about drawing your navel back to your spine. Now you have engaged the whole core. Think of the cylinder of support. So check your room, make sure it's safe. It's great to have a drink handy and perhaps a little towel. Let's grab your drink, grab your towel, and we'll come down to the mat. The first exercises will begin on our spine. This is called supine. We're going to look at some exercises that will support your spine, strengthen the lower back and the upper back. We're also going to mobilise the joints of the shoulders and the hips. So if you want to grab your little towel, you could use this as a pillow behind your head or perhaps a cushion. If you feel you don't need the towel and you can get the head in the position that's nice and long and you don't feel that the gaze goes back, you can look at the ceiling then your head is in the right position for your neck. Now, this setup is really important. Bring your heels a little bit closer towards your sit bones and feel that your heels are aligned with your sit bones. Taking your palms and turn them up to the ceiling. Notice how when you do this, you can get more opening through the front of the chest. I'll use some images through the class that might help you find the movement. So let's begin with what's called a pelvic tilt. Think of the pelvic floor, think of that little drawstring bag, tighten it just a little tighter. Now bring your pubic bone towards your forehead and tilt through to the lower back. And you have imprinted your lower back just gently into the floor. The pelvis is actually going backwards, that's a posterior or a backward tilt. Let's do that three more times. That's the exhale, inhale to return. That's the exhale. This is called a pelvic tilt or a pelvic curl. Let's do it one more time. That's a nice basic exercise and a foundation of many of the other exercises. 
Now if we think about tilting our pubic bone towards our heels, notice what happens if I inhale here, I'm just increasing that little arch in my lower back, keeping the tummy down, belly down, navel to spine, come back to neutral. Let's do that three more times. That's the in-breath and breathe out, come to neutral. If you do need that little pillow, it might put your head in a more comfortable position. Let's do it one more time. Come back to neutral. So let's now move between those two points. Towards your forehead is posterior, towards your heels is an anterior tilt. If you think about your hip bones, maybe like a rolling pin image. So have a look, I'm imagining these two hip bones are my fists here. I roll the rolling pin towards my forehead. I roll the rolling pin towards my heels. So posterior tilt, anterior tilt. Now keep going. Let's match it to the breath. Take a deep breath in, exhale, keeping these ribs down. And let's do three more times. Noticing your pelvic floor, draw your navel down. Let's finish on this one. And that's like the grandparent of many other exercises. So let's add something to here. Let's float both hands above your chest. Notice that if your hands come up higher, you will compress through the chest at the front and your shoulder blades are stretched at the back. I want you to keep your shoulder blades on the floor. So reach the fingers, but keep your scapula down on the floor. These are called arm arcs. So take an in breath. That's really important to keep your rib cage flat. Notice the difference between popping my ribs out. I've lost that sense of alignment between my pelvis and my ribs. I want to bring the hip and the pelvis in alignment. So breathe in, take this arm back. You may not touch the floor. Keep the rib cage down. Exhale to return to vertical. Let's swap arms. Inhale. Keeping your rib cage down, exhale. Let's do one more. These are called arm arcs, like a rainbow shape. Now keep your pelvis in neutral and take the arm back. Let's take those arms into little circles. So think of the fingers as the tip, or the middle finger can be the tip of a pencil. Can you draw the perfect circle on the ceiling? Let's do four. Noticing the joint mobilise, that's one. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through your mouth, two. You don't have to make them this big, you can make them little ones. That's three. And let's do one more. Nice and gentle. This is a gentle class today. And the other way, that's one. So it's a good place to start your Pilates journey. That's two. Drawing down on the navel, three and one more. So that's mobilising the shoulder joint, taking the hands down to the side. Now turn your palms down. I want you to add a little bit of pressure into the arms, bring your heels a little closer. The next foundation exercise is called bridging. So we come back to this notion of the pelvic tilt, keep your neck nice and long, keeping your chin relaxed. I'm going to press into the floor gently and start curling up through the pelvis. Only come up to that place where you feel you can keep your ribs aligned with your hips, aligned with the knees. And now starting from that place in your spine that would be behind your sternum, right up the top here on the floor, I want you to curl down each of your vertebra until you're back into neutral. Now this is wonderful to mobilise all of the spine. All the little muscles, I call them the soldier muscles, that work all up and down the spine. So this is called bridging. So try to let these muscles at the back of the legs be quieter. They all want to do all the work. Let's do one or two more. So here's the inhale. Exhale as you press up. Take a breath when you get to the top. Exhale, each vertebra has its moment. Pop them down and one more. Another image that might work for you is when you put your quilt into the quilt cover and you have little press studs, I want you to feel that you press stud gently each of your vertebra back to the floor. So that'll stretch and mobilize your spine. It's really important to stretch the front of the hips. So bring one knee into your chest. You can hold the front of your shin 
or even behind the thigh if that's more comfortable for your knees. Now notice that this muscle, at the, or these muscles at the front of your hip are actually in contraction here. Let's slide this leg away. Now hug this knee in a little closer if you can. Can you feel the stretch on your inner thigh? Yeah. We're going to take the opposite hand to the outside of the thigh and very gently roll this leg over until you feel a stretch on the outside of the leg, right up into the glute muscles. And if your neck is okay, you can turn your head to look at the opposite direction to the knee. Take two Pilates breaths in through the nose and gently out through your mouth. Breathe into the side of the ribs and the back of the ribs. Last one, breathe in. And breathe out. Bring your head back first. Bring this leg up. Now hold it here. See if you can straighten this leg. Now your hamstring might not be ready to be fully straightened. That's okay. Hold it here. Let's work through the joint. We point and we flex. So this is called plantar flexion and this is dorsiflexion. So plantar, like planting into the ground. And when you bring the top of your foot towards your face, it's like the dorsal fin of a dolphin. Let's do another four and three. This is really good for the ankle and for the thigh and the shin here. Last one. Little circles one way, little circles the other way. Now bring this leg in and slide it away. It might even feel a little bit longer than the other leg. Let's bring the other foot in. Stretch it away. This leg is long. It's really important to stretch the front of those hips. So you might feel this stretch on the inner thigh. Taking the hand to the outside of the thigh, this other arm can come out to the floor. Gently encourage. Now thinking about your spine, this is a rotation through your lumbar or your lower back. Take it over to the side. You can turn your head away to get that lovely stretch through the side of your neck. Take two Pilates breaths. In through the nose and out through your mouth. Like a little sigh. Let it go. One more. Bring your head back to neutral first. Let's let this leg float back up. Take it to as comfortable position as you can. You might even be able to straighten the leg, that's up to you. Let's point and flex, gently holding that leg. Ankle mobility, really important to keep your joints mobile. This will help. It's like WD-40 for your joints. And a couple more. And then let's circle. Circle one way, let's circle the other. You can feel the muscles in the shins, two muscles at the front and two muscles at the back of the calves working. And then fold it in, slide it away, and hopefully you feel the same length. Bring your feet back. Let's do a couple more exercises here. This one you'll start to feel your abdominal wall at the front start to work. This is called a chest lift. We'll do a modification. So I like to make a hammock. A hammock by interlacing the fingers. Now the hammock will support your head because when we first start Pilates some people may feel that they haven't used their neck muscles for a while and your neck muscles can get a little bit tense. Now we don't want them to be sore. So making sure you never hang on to the neck, you support the head. So the hammock goes behind your head. Cue your pelvic floor before you do anything else. The elbows are wide. I can just see them in my peripheral vision. Cue the pelvic floor, draw your navel down, posterior tilt, so tilt, and then exhale and lift up. Hello abdominals. Can you draw that navel right down to your spine? Taking one hand behind the thigh, keep supporting your head with your other hand. Take another in breath, and as you exhale, come a little higher to bend your elbows. Now keep this height. Feel that you get your rib to your hip, draw down. Draw a semicircle with this hand. Keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching. Pop your head back into the hammock with two hands. And you can hear it in my voice there, that was hard work. And let's do the other side. So bring your heels in a little closer. Still make sure they're aligned with your sit bones. Cue your pelvic floor. Watching that the ribs roll down towards your hips. Breathe in. Exhale, roll head, neck and shoulders off the floor. Scoop and hollow, lift pelvic floor. Taking the other hand to the other thigh. Inhale once again, exhale, lift up higher. And then take this hand in a big arc. 
keep reaching, somebody's reaching you up, keep looking through your knees, head back in the hammock, and down you go. Now that's called the chest lift. Let's try another four, and we might do a little bit faster. If you feel the need to slow down and use one arm, please choose that version. Otherwise, work with me. Here we go. Inhale, cue pelvic floor. Exhale, roll head, neck and shoulders. Can you take both hands behind your thighs? Lift a little higher on the exhalation. Stay high, stay high here, draw down. Inhale, keep reaching, oh, that's the difficult part. And down you go. How did you go? Let's do another three. Cue pelvic floor. Inhale, posterior tilt. Exhale, ribs to hips. Keep working that pelvic floor, both hands behind the thighs. Can you lift yourself a little higher? Yes, we can, rip to hip. Keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching. Hands to hip, down you go. Now have a rest if that's enough. Otherwise, here's your challenge. Two more. Inhale, cue pelvic floor, posterior to it. <sighs> exhale, inhale, exhale a little higher. Reach, 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 reach. Notice that's the point of challenge for me. And down, where was yours? Can you feel the whole thing might be challenging? Inhale, exhale. <sighs> Hands behind your thighs. Notice how the breath is really important. So you've got to keep breathing in here. Then put your head back in the hammock and then lower down. Hello, abdominals. Now remember they wrap all the way around your side waist as well. So it's not all about the front. So we're going to do another exercise now, which is called crisscross. And you'll use your oblique muscles sideways muscles. Float one leg so that the femur is vertical and the shin is what we call tabletop. So you use your imagination, this is the top of the coffee table. Now you might need to imprint your lower back for safety. Hang onto the floor, just press gently into the floor, float the other leg up. Now that's challenging enough for some of us. If you feel that it's too strong for your lower back, you can keep one foot on the floor or Try moving your knees a little bit closer to your shoulders. Can you feel how your lower back is more supported? If you want to work harder, get these femurs vertical. You really have to draw down here. Take the hands back into the hammock. Stretch one leg away to the ceiling is fine. The lower you go, the harder this is going to be. And now keep the opposite elbow up and across. Exhale, switch legs up and across, switch legs, you can do it with bent knees, and four, and three, that's the exhale, inhale as you pass through the centre, and one more each side, elbows wide, bring your head back to the centre, float your head down, float the knees down, and have a little rest. Now that image, you can feel how it's your rib cage that moved over to the diagonal than the other rib. When I'm doing that one at speed, a little bit faster, we might try that in a minute, is I think of having a wet flannel or a wet tea towel. I'm going to wring out the water. So that image of the wringing out is the image you might want to feel if you come back to this position. I'm going to do it a little faster, come up high. So I want you to bring your whole rib cage over to the diagonal. Let's try six a little bit faster. So take a deep breath in, cue your pelvic floor. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Ring out that flower and feet together and head down and feet down. How did you go? So those are both positions for your spine and the spine is in flexion, which means like the C curve, a big curve from your head right through to your spine. Now we're going to come up. You can come up any way that you like, but if you want to work with me, this is called an assisted roll up. So this leg is facing the ceiling. I'm going to push and pull simultaneously, not the back of the knee, but on the thigh. I'm going to curl up, keep looking down and then elongate. Now you can try the modified version. So curl down. Can you see the big C shape from my tail to my crown? Curl up, all the way up. So you might want to stay there. That's really important to exhale as you curl up. 
If you want to try two with me now, you're going to come all the way down. Inhale, right into the back and the sides of the ribs. Curl down, there's that pelvic tilt. And let your body roll down with control. Leg comes to the ceiling. Inhale, now push and pull at the same time. Keep looking down where there was a little bit of a speed bump in the road. And then elongate your spine. Last one, curl down. So this is called the assisted roll down. And when you get stronger with this exercise, exhale. Let's make that the last one. Let's swap over. Remember you can stay here. As you get stronger, you end up doing with both legs long. So noticing how we are curling the spine, like a capital C. So we have to use all the abdominal muscles. We scoop them inwards and we lengthen the spine using all the spinal muscles. So you can stay there if that's better for you. Otherwise, give it a try. Let's try for three. Inhale, wide and deep. <sighs> Exhale. This leg's going to follow. Notice how I use control. Now take a deep breath into the side of the back of the ribs. Exhale, push and pull. Keep your nose down. And then you finish the curve at the end like you're sitting up out of your sit bones. Two more. Inhale. Big curve. Now that's the grandparent of several exercises where we roll. And you might have seen people doing rolling like a ball or some of the harder exercises. Now come all the way up and sit long. I'm going to turn to the front. If you need to grab a drink, grab a drink. This is called long sit. So take the arms out in front, sit up nice and tall, and feel all of the infrastructure of your back working. Get your ribs up higher out of your hip bones. So from this position, my arms are going to reach towards my toes, but I want you to feel it more into your back muscles, gentle stretch, rather than the back of the legs. So this is called spine stretch. Breathe in, have a look first. Exhale, my pelvis goes slightly backwards and I reach my hands towards my toes. Can you see that big curve? I'll show you from the side. And curl up. So on the side, sitting up nice and tall. Now, if you find it hard to sit up out of your sit bones, you can use your little rolled up towel and just pop it under your sit bones and see how it tilts your pelvis forward? That's much more comfortable for many of us. So breathe in, the feet can be relaxed. Lift up tall, scapula down, shoulder blades down. Breathe in, little pelvic tilt first. Reach for the toes, but get the biggest C curve you can through your spine. And stack the vertebrae. Let's do two more from here. Inhale, you really need to exhale. Get rid of the air. And then stack the vertebrae. All of those little muscles along the side of the spine doing their job. And release. So that's spine stretch forward. This is another position. This one is a rotation. So you can take your hands, I'll come back to the front. You can take your hands into a prayer position or a Cossack dancer position, but watch that the shoulders are down. We don't want those shoulders up. These muscles get really tight. So the top of the shoulders here, we want to relax them. So think of your shoulder blades like a waterfall. Let that water roll down the back. That feels better. So from here to here, or those of you who know your shoulders are comfortable to do this, take the levers out long, it's like a T shape. Now, can you feel gravity pushing us down? So gravity's pushing us down slowly. So be a gravity fighter. Lift up, draw your navel back, lift up tall. Breathe in, we're going to rotate to the right. Exhale, lift your ribs out of your hips. Follow with the eyes. Inhale, exhale, come back to center. Let's go the other way. Now I'm standing in my feet, so I'm pressing my feet around. That gives me my stability on the floor. Lift up, exhale, rotate the rib cage. Look along the arm, come back to the center and release. How did you go? Now this might be nicer 
because your shoulders are more relaxed. This is an alternative, or the full whammy with the long lever. Let's do two of each. So starting here, lifting your rib cage up out of your hips, breathe in wide and deep to the side and the back of the ribs. Exhale, move your ribs, but keep your nose aligned with your fingers. Breathe in, exhale, return. Go the other way. Keep lifting up, elongate from your crown. Now we've talked about breathing. One of the other principles for Pilates, let's change the arms, is what's called axial elongation. So keep your spine long. Exhale. Inhale to return this time. Exhale to rotate. And inhale to return. And we'll leave it there. So shake out your thighs. Can you feel the front of your thighs working really hard here? You might need to give them a bit of a stretch. So we're coming down to the side line. There's a whole series of exercises we can do side line. Might need a little pillow. I'll move my water out of the way. So to set yourself up, it's the same position we did on the back. So it's still crook, or the heels align with your sit bones. But this time, my heels are still aligned with my sit bones, but I'm going to lie on this side of the body. So for me, it's uncomfortable for me to put my head on the floor. So I'm going to use my arm long, and then put my pillow. Oh, that's much nicer. So if you've got a little rolled up towel or a pillow, I want you to lift the side waist up. Pop the towel where it's comfortable. If it gets in the way, you can also crook that arm on the floor. So lift these side waist muscles. Notice how you're using your abdominal girdle to hold that position. Relax this abdominal wall and notice the difference. See how it's floppy down? I want you to bring your side waist in pelvic floor in and lift these sideways muscles. That's it, fabulous. The arm can be in front or if you're feeling okay, as long as your fingers don't get a little bit uncomfortable, take your arm up here, it will give you that beautiful stretch through the chest. Can you visualize your ribs being vertical and your pelvis being vertical? Float the right leg up, not too high because we don't want to lose this position on the side. So bring this knee forward into flexion and then take it back. Feel the stretch in the front of the hip. Let's do two or three more. Now when you get stronger, this particular exercise is then done on the forearm or even on the tip of the elbow. Yeah, can you see the difference? So there's less point of contact to the floor. But we'll stay with this one today. The hand can be in front if it's better. But keep your spine as still as possible. This is my last one. Now hold it here, float the shin down. Keeping your feet as if they were Velcroed together and keeping your pelvis vertical, can you just externally rotate by opening the knee? You can do this reasonably fast. Now this is to protect and to strengthen all of the muscles around the back of the hip as you keep going. And this is called the clam. Well, the Americans call it the clam. Australians, we call it the oyster. So let's do two more. Can you feel the hip mobility? It's really important to do this, particularly as we get older. Last one. So this is external rotation of the hip. We have a tendency as we get older to internally rotate, so we need to do that one. Coming up now. Let's take this leg behind. It's really important to stretch the front of the hip. So we take this leg behind as far as possible. And I'm going to reach, it's the same arm as leg, reach this arm forward and feel this delicious stretch. Keep stretching and breathe for four. And three. And two. And one. And bring that hand back and bring the legs back, push yourself up to side plank. Now again, thinking about the hips, this is called the mermaid. Now the original exercise is with one hip into internal rotation and the other femur in the hip into external rotation. Now a lot of us don't like this on our knee. So if this Z sit shape is not comfortable for you, please sit cross-legged 
or even in the long sit, whatever feels comfortable. Let me show you the original. So lining up that shin with the front of the mat, sit up nice and tall. You can feel how not using those legs is making you use your core muscles more. So the side waist, lifting up out of the sit bones, taking one hand to the floor. It's the same hand as the leg in front if you've got Z-sit. Now this arm is going to be long. Now notice the difference between a relaxed arm and one that's really intentionally stretching up. Get the arm by the ear. Now thinking of your spine, you're going to reach up and over, gently resting onto this hand, and this is the exhale. So take a deep breath in, the exhale you stretch, keeping your sit bones down. Exhale, lean over and feel that somebody's pulling your wrist. Come on up. Now, use your imagination if you're in this Z-sit, that's your fish tail for the mermaid. Come up to the other arm. I want to see, as long as there's no injury in your shoulder or your elbow, let's get a really good stretch so you can lift your rib cage out of your pelvis. Big breath in, exhale. Now, your spine is going into what's called lateral flexion. So the spine moves from side to side. Your spine moves in five ways. So forward is flexion. When you do a back bend, that's extension. This is lateral flexion. We'll talk about the others in a minute. But notice if I bring my arm forward, it might be a little bit more comfortable for your shoulder, but you've actually gone into flexion, so that's not this exercise. So keep your arm by your ear, and then reach. And you can feel the rib cage opening. Think of a fan. Open the fan as you open. That has to be the exhale. Come back to the center. Now adjust your seat if you need. We're going to do six, a little bit faster. And because it's called the mermaid, you can have a vision of the ocean. Seagrass waving on the ocean floor and keep it nice and fluid. So here's the in-breath. Wide and deep, ribs to hips. Exhale, come on up, inhale. Exhale, over you go. You won't stretch as far on the opposite side. That's two. Beautiful sideways stretch for all of those muscles. In the side of the body, you're stabilizing with your pelvic floor, the pelvis is down. Maybe this is the last one. Come up, taking the arms here, and now this is a test of hip mobility. If you need to use your hands, don't hesitate. But can you flip the position? Whoops, I use my hands. <laughs> Set yourself up. Remember, you probably feel a little bit different on one side than the other. So accommodate that by either sitting in cross legs, make sure you've crossed over the legs if you're sitting cross legs, or long sit. So let's get the set up. So press up, lifting up, ribs out of hips, breathe in wide and deep, here we go, reach. Exhale, lateral flexion, bend this elbow, hang onto your fishtail, over you go. The gaze can be forward, so if you think all things aquatic, you're looking at the horizon. And let's do another three or four. So no magic number. I'd rather you do less and do them with perfect form than do many without the perfect form. Last one coming up. Let's finish this off. Coming over, coming up, and let's switch those legs around. How are those hips feeling? Bring the soles of the feet together. If you can manage that, think of Velcro. So bring the Velcro together. Your heels can get a little closer and some of you might be able to get your knees much further down than I. From the side, I want you to think about spinal flexion. We're coming down to the other side to do the other side leg in a moment. But this is a simple stretch. So tuck under, that pelvic floor tucks back, or the pubic bone tucks under, and stretch forward into spine stretch. I'm going to keep my head up so you can hear me, but I want you to stay there in your deepest stretch Thinking of the inner thighs stretching. Let's stay for another three in-breaths, in through the nose and out through your mouth. Let it all go. Scapula relaxes. Get a little deeper in the next two stretches. Knees get closer to the floor. Feel the hips opening. You can even hold your feet. And come on down. If you can get your forearms to the floor, please do. Come on up. Now remember which side you worked? This side for me. So shimmy yourself around. 
If you need the pillow, if you've got broad shoulders, you probably need the pillow. So set yourself up and remember your heels. If you could see the skeleton of yourself from the ceiling, you would see your pelvis is vertical. You would see your rib cage being vertical and the sideways muscles lifting off the floor. So taking this arm to the ceiling if it's comfortable. Otherwise, take it in front and just rest it on the floor. Now keep those obliques. The obliques are like the wraparound muscles in the side here. And also the muscles just above your pubic bone wrapping all the way around called the transverse abdominis. Now when you go on a plane, you think about putting the seat belt on in the aeroplane. It's low and it's tight. Tighten that notch on that low seat belt. Float this leg up. Let's bring it forward. So this is flexion and then extension. So the hand can be here just to keep you supported. Thinking about the stretch at the back of the pelvis. Exhale, thinking about the stretch at the front of the hip that gets very tight. It's working all day, every day. Let's do three or four more. Just coming up onto the elbow to show you the harder version, you're using your side waist. The shin is parallel to the floor. Keep the abdominals turned on, arm to the ceiling. And then imagine you're polishing the top of a very low coffee table here. Watch out you don't dip the spine here. Let's do two more here. Can you feel the side waist muscles work? Can you reach this arm up a little high? Keep your spine straight. Back of the hip working. Last one for me. Good, so a whole series you can do here. Let's come to the clam or the oyster. So lying all the way down. Again, if you prefer side waist engaged, just check your setup. Heels align with sit bones, Velcro the side of the feet. Open the knee and close the knee. Now there is a harder version. What would you do to make this a bit harder for you? Well, I'll show you. You can come up, you can lift both the knees and the feet off the floor. But notice how I didn't rock back with my pelvis. Now that's a little strong on shoulders for many people. You can do this down here. Pressing your hand into the floor. Do another two of these. Really good for your hip openings. Hip strength, hip mobility and release. Now take this leg back, bring the arm forward. Roll the hips slightly forward and stretch as far as you can. Come over, take this hip down to the floor. You're reaching this leg back, you're getting the long stretch. And breathe for four. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And three. It's a delicious stretch. And two. Last one. Folding the knee in, taking the hand to the floor and pressing yourself. Now the next series of exercises we're doing lying on the front of the body. This is called prone. So take your pillow if you need, if you're wearing glasses etc. If you need to keep them on that's, that's fine, you can keep your head off the floor. Otherwise turn your ear to the side instead of your forehead. So in prone, this is really important to strengthen all of the back muscles. We're going to work the thoracic part of your spine, the 12 vertebrae, here that for many people get very stiff and sometimes if you have a problem with your thoracic vertebra you might end up with a problem with the neck or even the lower back so sitting down all day makes us very tight so we're going to strengthen the muscles of the upper back and then the lower back so the setup I'll show you and then I'll lift my head up so you can see me and hear me more clearly here's my little pillow I've rolled it up very functional turn off this one so my forehead is on the towel, my hands are by my side. Now keep axial elongation, so right through your spine is long. Notice how you probably are using the glutes and the lower back. I want to turn those off. So if you touch your big toes to kiss, kiss your big toes, turn your heels apart, and you're going to be less likely to use the lower back for this series of exercises. So the hands are here side of the mat. Perhaps think like the shape of a cactus. Down floats up and 
floats down. I'll keep my head up so you can hear me. Float down. Float it down. Now that's the in breath as it floats up. So breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feel this between the shoulder blades. Keep going everyone. So feel it between the shoulder blades. You've got little muscles underneath the big muscles of your upper back called the trapezius. Underneath those, you've got little muscles here that move the scapula as well, and they're called rhomboids. And this is helping us to locate these little muscles here called rhomboids. Let's do another two. Now if that's easy enough for you and comfortable, bring those toes together. Can you try two arms at the same time? Let me show you. Cue your pelvic floor. Breathe in wide and deep. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Noticing the shoulders get closer at the back. And then release. Two more of these. In through the nose. Out through your mouth. Last one, please. And release. Now bring your feet into parallel. You can come up onto your forearms. Now for some people, this is enough for their lower back. They just might want to stay here. But in this pre-swan it's called, or you might be familiar with a yoga exercise or an, another exercise which might be called the Sphinx. So you're lifting, you're pressing gently into the floor, making sure your ears are a long way from the top of the shoulders. So stay here for a moment, simply breathing. And as you stay there, be aware of the muscles in your upper back and lower back. So if you think about a waterfall, you can feel the water coming down the back. So let these shoulder blades glide down the back like a waterfall. And then gently coming down. This is called the swan. We'll do a baby swan so we don't come up very high. So the hands are by your ribs. If you take your hands by your shoulders, as you come up like so, you might be inclined to hunch up through the shoulders and that's not good for the top of your shoulders, the trapezius or the deltoids. So I want you to bring your shoulders back. As you inhale, you do need to use your lower back and your glutes. So squeeze your glutes. You might even bring the heels together. So cue your pelvic floor, roll a marble with your nose to the end of the mat, send your elbows to your heels and stop. Oh yeah, can you feel the back of your arm? Down you go. And let's do two more. This is really good for your tricep. Stronger arms for everyday movement, lifting, carrying, transferring yourself. Remember tricep is such an important muscle. That's the last one. Now have a little rest. You can come up and sit back into a shell position. You can take your head right down if you prefer. Or you can stay with me here. I'm going to show you the full swan and let's see if you want to try a couple. So come on down using your upper body. So keeping your hands here, the full swan will come all the way up. So breathe in. Press the floor away, cue your pelvic floor, squeeze your glutes. <sighs> Come all the way up and look at the wall in front. Now down you go very slowly, front of the thighs, pelvis, tummy, chest, forehead. Let's do two more. Take a deep breath in. Put the sails up in your back, breathe in wide and deep. Exhale, <sighs> push the floor away. And down you come. And last one. And all the way down. Nice and graceful. And take a moment to rest. Now gently bringing yourself up. Come back to this stretch position. Taking the right arm forward and stretch back as far as you can. Can you feel the stretch in the side of your waist? Right to the top of your hip. 
And let's take the other arm forward. The top of the hip of the iliac crest. Feel that stretch right through the sideways, maybe the front of the arm, under the armpit. And then bring, bring both hands flat. This is called the quadruped position. So the femurs are as vertical as possible. Now with the elbows, I imagine the elbows like being elbow eyes. So it's really important to get the eyes looking at each other. So you don't hyperextend the elbows. Now, if you're not comfortable into this quadruped or kneeling position, you can do this standing up in a similar way. Now take the weight to the outside of the little pinky, rather than too much pressure in the heel of the hand. So elbow eyes facing, hands are vertical, femurs are vertical. Can you feel that your body's probably patterned into doing a push-up or even a swan? So bring your center of gravity back, wiggle it back, and then get the axial elongation in your spine from the top of your spine to the base of your spine. Draw everything up, but keep the shape of your spine. This is the cat stretch. So as you tuck under, bring your pubic bone towards your forehead, keeping your elbows soft. Let the neck follow. The neck is part of your spine. As the exhale, breathe in, come through the center. And then some people call this the cow. I call it the pony because that's where you put the pony saddle, just here. So your chest light shines forward. That's extension for the spine, just like we did on the floor lying down. So tuck under, exhale. Wide and deep with the inhale. Pass through a neutral spine or centra, central spine, exhale. Here's my lighthouse, it's shining forward the light. Can you feel your shoulder blades slide down the back? Beautiful extension. And let's do two more. You can do a little bit faster if you like. Exhale here, flexion, extension. Last one. And come into neutral. Come into a seated position. You can sit any way that you like. Now let's just recap. Can you feel how you've worked your wrists? You've strengthened the wrist. Lots of load bearing, which is fantastic for bone density. So you've strengthened the shoulders. You've mobilized the shoulders. You've mobilized the wrists. You've worked the whole core. Remember the core is more than the front abdominals. You've worked the cylinder of support, your back muscles, your side waist muscles, the back of the hip, the side of the hip, the front of the hip, the legs, the ankle joint, the knee joint, the hip joint, the feet. You have worked the whole body. So that's an introduction to Pilates. I hope that you've enjoyed it, you've learned something about your body. We talked about the principles of breath, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, because the breath will facilitate how you move. We talked about the principle of elongating your spine. So take some of those principles and some of those concepts with you when you go shopping, when you do the housework, when you do the gardening, when you're standing, think of perfect posture as being the relationship to where your rib cage is and your pelvis and your shoulders. And keep your neck long and keep smiling and keep moving for life. Thank you.